the meeting between the federal government and the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, over fuel subsidy removal has ended without a consensus. The meeting which held yesterday, Wednesday, at the presidential villa in Abuja uh, had representatives of the federal government, including uh, President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu's, um, you know, for spokespersons, unofficial spokespersons, the group CEO of the Ni uh, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, or company NNPC Limited, uh, Melekiari, and other government officials. After several hours of meeting with the federal government, the meeting ended in a deadlock with the NLC demanding that the federal government return to the status quo by reversing the price of fuel before resuming negotiations with the NLC. <laughs> Cannot go into any details now because talks are still ongoing. We cannot finish everything in one, at one sitting. So we, are still, we have adjourned now. We are continuing the talks at a later date, very, very shortly. You know, but the point is that talks are ongoing uh, and it's always better on all sides to keep talking with a view to arriving at a very amicable resolution that will be in the longer. That's uh, the update we have there. So far, NLC has asked that they re re return the price to status quo before anything else is said. Meanwhile, as Nigerians continue to grapple with the impact of the May 29 address and the president's announcement on subsidy removal, Many fuel stations have increased pump prices, leaving Nigerians in the face of sudden hardship. We went to the streets of Lagos to see how Nigerians are reacting to this increase, and here's what they had to say. This is shocking to me. I came from Portacot yesterday, so it wasn't like this in Portacot. And I don't even know the direction of where I'm going to. I've been looking for both ties I cannot see. They say they have increased fuel to 600 naira. So one bus carried me from Jibo and dropped me somewhere along that and said I should trek down here and look for a car that is going to VI because I'm going to Carrington Crescent. So now they say I should join this queue. So whoever that take, took this kind of decision, I don't think that person can imagine what people are going through. It has affected us a lot. Like we normally, I operate from Obalene to Marina Axis. Normally, we, we do carry, a, a transport fare used to be 100 naira, 150 per day. So, but this time around, it has affected us. To even buy fuel, there will be delays. Sometimes if I queue in the morning, like as of yesterday, I queue in the morning. Before I could get fuel, it was after 5 in the evening. So when I came back, I was not happy with it. In fact, before I even get there, I have to spend... I have to spend like two or three hundred naira at the filling station before I could be able to get like five or ten liters for me to start job today. So the policy has affected us a lot. Not only the passenger, I do feel for the passenger as well because how much is their salary? Let me go help us for this country. This is it's too hard for citizens to be cooked for this kind of thing. For here now to Lekina, say five hundred, for me to a one thousand, it's too much. I've been here since morning, since 8 o'clock. They say 300, 200. If from here to Aja, from here to Lekki, it's 200 naira before. But right now it's 500 naira. And no money, no employment, nothing, nothing. I want my person dying. Let's also take a look at some of the reactions by notable players on the Nigerian political landscape. We have Oweri who says, Workers' minimum wage is 30k per month. Official but. Uh, just stumbled a few times at his inauguration, and the only thing he could say was fuel subsidy is gone. He didn't say next minimum wage is now to 50k, and, do and now those who claim this is good for Nigeria are stranded at home, unable to pay their way to work. Those who said an increase in minimum wage would lead to inflation are not saying a 300% increase in fuel price will kill everyone, even the middle class, if there exist any. They don't care about you. Hashtag revolution now. That's from Omoyele Showari. We also have Reno Omokri who says, but why are some Nigerians complaining about the removal of fuel subsidy? All major presidential candidates, except Rabi Musa Kwankwaso, publicly said they would remove it on day one of being sworn in. And not too fond of Tinubu's past as a cartel member. However, on this he is correct, and I support fuel subsidy removal unequivocally. 
This is the time for patriotism. Let us pursue our case to, to right the wrongs of the Nigeria elections 2023. But until the courts render a final judgment, let us praise where necessary and oppose appropriately. Hashtag table shaker. I think, it, I think it's very, very, um, you know, um, I don't know what, what the word is, but I think it's very, very dishonest um, and borderline stupid for anyone to be enforcing patriotism on Nigerians, you know, and using let us be patriotic as a way to cajole Nigerians into accepting po government policies that were not properly thought of and are more dangerous to the Nigerian than, you know, and Nigerian state even than ever. Um, I think it's, it's, it's borderline stupid. And I've said it, you know, even in conversations that I had yesterday, that you cannot blackmail Nigerians or gaslight Nigerians into being patriotic when this is completely pulling and tearing their lives apart. Um, this is a 300% increase or expected even more, you know, uh, more than 300% increase in the price of petrol. And that means the price of everything is going to go up. Transportation, food, everything. Time's while three. your minimum wage remains 30,000 naira. And that's yeah. not even in every state of the, of the Federation. And so it is, you are basically tearing their lives to shreds and then telling them to be patriotic at the same time. Whereas the government has not said anything about what its plans are to reduce the cost of government spending. And so Renault Mokra and every other person who's telling people to be patriotic, I personally will tell them to shut up. Um, but here's another thing. In the, in the clips that we played yes, you know, earlier, where Dele Alake, who I've said is an unofficial spokesperson of the president because he has not been named the spokesperson of the, of the president, and we have Adam Sushomala there. I'm not even sure what he's doing there because I'm not, I don't know what role he's playing. We have the CBN governor. I also do not know what the CBN governor's role is in that conversation, but, but that's not a problem. Why are we having conversations to discuss, you know, um, a, 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 a policy that has been implemented? So they didn't. So it means didn't that there wasn't any, exactly, there wasn't any pre-planning. There so, wasn't any, you know, okay, let's deliberate this first. So you implement first. And then you don't have to deliberate out the fire. So that's what a number of Nigerians have said. For the larger part, a number of people knew that President Muhammadu had, Buhari had already said that the payment of subsidy was going to end by the 30th of June and there, was, there were no plans to continue it. But whilst you knew this, what were the plans that were put in place to mitigate the harshness that it would cause on the average Nigeria? I think these are some of the major questions that people are asking. Yeah. But let us know what your thoughts are. Tweet at New Central TV. We've come to the end of the show. It's been quite a heated one, but we're hoping to have... Um, some form of calm, even as the days go by here in Nigeria. As we come to the end of the show today, let's share with you what's happening later today.